doesn't seem right. He doesn't have anybody to introduce himself. So I'd like to be the one to do that. Um, it's been a blessing down through the years. Um, I've had that, that privilege, I call it. Um, although I may not know all of you pastors, um, I have the, the heart of a pastor. I kind of know how pastors think and how they move and so forth. I don't understand a lot of times they'll say things and I'm like, I don't see that pastor, but I trust that you do. And <laughs> I'm going to have faith and I'm going to follow you on that one, you know. 
But that, once again, that's because he was called for that position and I wasn't. But through the years, I've had the privilege of just being able to, I've, uh, I've had the privilege of being able to have a pastor sometime who, you know, asked me to come in after um, a certain time in his life and he was just, I didn't even know the pressure he was under and yet he called me into his office and I came in and he, he sat down and even before he started to speak, he just put his head down on the desk and started weeping. And, and he's, he's asking me, he's saying, Brother Dan, what do, you want, what do you think I should do? And I'm like, you know, you know, I feel like singing that song, Who Am I, Lord, you know? And uh, so, but, you know, it, 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 I, I enjoyed the fact that when you are following the Lord so closely that a man of God can actually open his heart up to you and share things with you that he can't share with other people. And uh, I know just recently, Pastor asked me after one of our meetings, he said, uh, Brother Danny said, I wasn't too hard, was I? I said, no, you weren't, Pastor. I said, you, you said what you had to say, and you said it with grace, and um, even put a little cherry on top at the end, you know. So, um, but it's just a blessing to know uh, man of God. He's the first one I've known. As you get older, you know, you find out after a while your doctor's younger than you, your dentist is younger than you, the undertaker is younger than you, and so is your pastor. And so this was the, my first pastor that I had that was actually younger than me. And um, so I just, I never had that think of, you know, he, he can glean from my years of experience, you know, nothing like that, you know. But I just thought, well, he's dealing with an old man here, so He'll have to put up with that part of it, but uh, perhaps I have something that the years of being alive have taught me down the road a little further than his family is, and uh, being able to be a blessing to him. So I'd ask you to give your attention to I'm my pastor at this time. Pastor Alan. Amen. Thank you for your words of kindness. Amen. I had to pay him to uh, say all that, and... Uh, no, in all real reality, I really do appreciate him. He's been a, uh, he had never been a deacon until he'd been in our church. Uh, he had actually been on staff at a number of different churches. And because of uh, the church's policies in those various ministries, they never allowed uh, somebody that was on staff to be a, a deacon. And uh, uh, so when he came here, I asked him, I said, hey, would you, uh, you know, consider doing this and, and serving this capacity? And, and uh, uh, he's been uh, our deacon, uh, our, a deacon in our church, uh, almost as long as they've been here. I, I want to say they came in 2011, uh, so however long that is, 13 years. I think he's been a deacon for 12 of those 13 and uh, just been a faithful man. And, and uh, uh, I have asked him his advice about a lot of different things. Uh, they have gone through some uh, things that our church has gone through in uh, recent years. And, and I asked him, I said, hey, have you ever dealt with this? And he's like, yeah. And, uh, you know, after praying about some things, you know, you, you still want to get some advice. And, and uh, I'm never above asking other people's advice. I've never gotten to the point where I think I have all the answers. And, and uh, even uh, uh, he you know, was referencing a, a recent meeting. And, and uh, I said, you know, I had to say some things and some uh, very pointed things, but I said, I wasn't trying to, uh, you know, uh, be a lord over them or anything like that, and just trying to, uh, you know, say some things in a kind way, and he said, no, Pastor, you, you said it very graciously, and so I've appreciated him, appreciated his words of kindness this morning. Turn with me, if you would, to Second uh, Timothy chapter number three. This is the, the theme of our church uh, for the year, uh, and uh, uh, this particular verse is what we're going to look at. Uh, I'm going to give you some things to kind of get you in the mindset of what uh, Paul was telling Timothy. And uh, uh, we're going to stand and show respect to the reading of God's Word, if you wouldn't mind, uh, with me. And uh, we're going to just read one verse. Uh, we'll have a word of prayer, and then we'll uh, get into the Scripture here. Uh, Paul, he uh, begins the uh, chapter off here in chapter number three, Second Timothy chapter number three. He talks about, uh, you know, that in the last days, perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves. But if you just stop and think about these uh, few things that are mentioned just in these few verses, uh, boy, doesn't that uh, uh, really kind of convey what is going on in our society? You know, 
Barabbas, amen, uh, rather than Jesus, you know, they'd they, uh, be rather uh, lovers of their own selves, doing all kinds of things, uh, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, and holy, without natural affection, affection truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers uh, of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but not denying the power thereof from such turn away. And he's uh, giving all these things things that uh, are said, but look with me all the way down to verse number 14. I'll have you read it with me there. Verse number 14, 2 Timothy chapter number 3, verse 14. Let's read it aloud together. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. I entitled the message just simply continue. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank and praise you for all that you do for us. Lord, thank you for the men that have been able to uh, come here today. And Lord, I know there was others uh, yet that were uh, planning on being here today. Uh, uh, Lord, for whatever reason, they weren't able to make it. And and, uh, Lord, you know and uh, certainly, Lord, we know that uh, uh, you desire to uh, encourage us, though, and, and uh, Lord, I pray that you'd help uh, uh, me to be able to convey the thoughts that you laid upon my heart, and, and uh, Lord, that this message would be a, a challenge and a help and an encouragement uh, to uh, each of the pastors, but Lord, also that they'd uh, uh, be willing to, uh, if there's some changes that need to be made, Lord, they'd, they'd make those changes and adjustments, but Lord, certainly our desire is that we would continue. You. Lord, you said, moreover, it is uh, required in stewards that a man be found faithful. Lord, help us to be faithful. Help us to continue. And Lord, that this me- message would uh, convey that thought uh, that you've laid upon my heart. Bless now our, uh, your word. Bless your people. And Lord, that uh, everything that we say and do would bring honor and glory uh, to you. And we'll be sure to give you all praise and glory for it. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, amen. Thank you. Maybe may be seated. Continue, continue. You know, uh, uh, we need to have, of course, uh, forward vision. You know, uh, uh, I know uh, uh, it's important as a, as a pastor uh, for, you know, uh, we, we start doing our yearly planning. I've already been praying about our theme for next year. And, and uh, uh, you know, there's a lot of things that I've already put on the calendar for next year. And I'm like, okay, we're going to make sure we get this too. And we're going to go, go to this event or whatever, or promote this thing. And, uh, you know, we, we ought to uh, go forward. And, and uh, many times we get knocked down as a, as a pastor, you know, uh, um, if I, uh, uh, and I'm, I'm not trying to make this message about me at all. So, uh, don't think that, but, uh, boy, I tell you, I've gone through a lot, uh, in 18 years of pastoring, uh, I've dealt with, uh, uh, people, uh, you know, making all kinds of false accusations. Uh, I've dealt with people making up, I'm just flat, flat out making up stuff. And uh, I had a gentleman, he was in our church. And, and uh, if I said his name, I know some of you would know him. And uh, he uh, began, he was in our church for a little bit and then he left. And, and then he began to tell people, oh, Pastor Hallett, uh, he's, uh, uh, he's no longer using the King James and, and he's no longer uh, singing the hymns. And, and uh, I was just telling my father-in-law, I said, there was a gentleman over in, in Minnesota. I said, I had heard that and, and heard that about him. He wasn't doing the, you know, using the King James, wasn't uh, using the hymns anymore. And, and uh, then I got uh, reconnected with him and I, I was talking with him and he goes, uh, no, that didn't happen. He said, I had a staff person that left and he said he was telling people that. And I said, that's what I heard. And, and I said, that's why I stopped inviting you because I invited him to the meeting. He wasn't able to come. He had a funeral he had to go to. And, and he said, Brother Hallett, he said, I'd love to come. But he said, I've got this funeral I've, I've got to go to. And I said, I understand. But uh, uh, certainly uh, uh, there are things that, uh, we, uh, that happen to us. We get knocked down. We, uh, we need to rise back up again. We uh, need to rebuild. We, uh, but more importantly, we must continue to go forward. We must continue to rise up. We must continue to rebuild. We must uh, continue in the things of God as we've already seen in the scriptures here in our text there in verse number 14. Too many people want to give up or stop serving the Lord when the going gets tough. You know, uh, uh, I remember uh, I had somebody, uh, the year my dad passed away, it's hard to believe my dad's been gone 18 years. 
The year my dad passed away, uh, we also lost uh, Thaddeus. My wife was uh, a week uh, away from the due date, and, and Thaddeus, just for whatever reason, just all of a sudden stopped moving. He had he'd been moving uh, uh, this entire time, and she was having trouble sleeping, and, and then all of a sudden he just stopped, and she said, honey, there's something wrong. I was down in Black River Falls, and she said, I'm going to the hospital. There's something wrong. And I said, brother, uh, brother Ken, I said, I'm so sorry. I got to head home, and I took off and, and uh, uh, got to the hospital, and by the time I got there, uh, uh, she found out that uh, Thaddeus had already passed, and when he was born, we found out what had happened, and, and uh, I got up that Sunday, I don't remember what day of the week that was, but I got up that Sunday and preached, and I had somebody come to me, and they said, Pastor, why aren't you crying? Why don't you just stop preaching? I said, well, God's put it in my heart to preach, and, and I said, uh, you know, I, 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 I'm not going to, I said, I know I'll see him again, and and I said, it's sad that that happened, but I said, I'm not just going to stop preaching uh, just because something bad happens in my life. And we must continue to, uh, to do things, even though, uh, uh, you know, we don't stop serving the Lord when, when the going gets tough. We must continue to do things as far as sharing the gospel, continue to do what the Lord has shown us to do. And the Apostle Paul, he's writing to young Timothy and challenging him with, uh, with some things that, that resonate with us and apply to us today. And we'll look at some things that I've just got three main thoughts that hopefully will be a help and encouragement to each of you as far as uh, uh, some things that happen in life. <coughs> Excuse me. And then why we must uh, continue in the things of God. First of all, number one, persecutions will come. Persecutions will come. Look with me in verse number 11 and 12. As I mentioned, some of the things that had happened, you know, even in verse number three, he said they're uh, false accusers and continent, fierce despisers of those that are good. You know, uh, excuse me, if you notice in verse number 11, he says this, persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch and Iconium, at Lystra, what, what persecutions I endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. The Apostle Paul was writing to young Timothy to let him know that there would be uh, uh, persecutions and afflictions and, and trials of his faith. You know, as I said, I, I, never, uh, I never would have dreamed uh, seeing some of the things that have happened uh, in my lifetime and, and in, in, in my ministry, and, and uh, there were some things I was like, hey, you know what, uh, God's blessing, we're, we're doing good, and, and uh, then uh, about 10 years ago, we had a, a couple that just, uh, uh, the, the lady started making up stuff, and, and she just, uh, uh, now she's denied God, she denies the existence of God, and, and uh, there were some people I was trying to warn them about, and I said, hey, uh, stay away from them. Uh, they're going to hurt you, and they're going to hurt you spiritually. And people are like, oh, no, they're great. They're fine. And, you know, they look good. And by the way, you can look good on the outside, but if, it's, if you got something wrong in your heart, it'll come out. Amen? But there will be persecutions and afflictions and trials of your faith. When COVID happened, we, Brother Copes and I, we were talking about this. He was here uh, uh, at our church. He had uh, 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 spoke. He and his wife spoke at our couples retreat on that Friday and Saturday. And then uh, on that Sunday, he preached. And on Monday, uh, that would have been uh, uh, March 15th or something like that. It was that Monday when, when President Trump had said, hey, we're going to shut down the country for two weeks and, and uh, to try to, uh, I don't remember, curve or something like that, whatever it was. I was like, this is dumb. There's no, uh, you know, anyways, uh, uh, when all that happened, uh, we, uh, I, I talked with our deacons and council of men, got their, uh, you know, kind of got their input and, uh, you know, some of them said, Hey pastor, maybe we just have one, one service a week. And, and, uh, uh some of them said, Hey, maybe we could just do, uh, uh, you know, one morning service, one Sunday night service, and then, you know, not have any other service. And, and I was praying about it, I was, uh, you know, because I, I talked with them, and, and uh, that was on, a mon on that Monday night, and I talked with them maybe about three hours or so, and, and by Tuesday, uh, Tuesday afternoon, though, I had been praying uh, Tuesday morning, and Tuesday afternoon, I was like, I just don't have peace about this. I don't have peace about, you know, just doing one service, and, 
And uh, I was like, you know what, uh, let, me, let me do some research. So I started calling some people, and, and I'm not going to go into all that, but, but uh, I talked to some attorneys. I talked to uh, uh, some of our uh, uh, Congress, uh, our assembly, and uh, state assembly, and state senators. And, and uh, I talked to uh, some of you know uh, Ron Johnson. I talked to him directly because I'm like, hey, I want to, uh, you know, here's the reason why I want to talk to him. I want to get his advice on this. And, uh, uh, but each person that I talked with, uh, you know, I, I said, here's what our governor said. And, and uh, I said, and I even talked to one attorney, I, uh, I had him on uh, uh, FaceTime and I said, hey, could we argue this in a court of law that this is uh, what we're doing? This is, we're following the, the mandate and, and all that. And he said, yeah. So then we, we did that. We had service. We uh, had uh, 10 people per room. We had a whole bunch of rooms set up. We had it set up to where we could have 190 here in our whole building. And uh, uh, then uh, uh, I had the uh, health department. We had service on that first Wednesday. And on that Thursday, I had the health department call me. Pastor Hal, it's our understanding you had services. I'm like, yep. Oh, well, you're not supposed to have services. I'm like, oh, well, in the mandate, it says that we can. I said, that's, uh, that's what it says. I said, uh, I'm reading this. This is what, I, uh, what I've, said, I've read. And... And uh, I talked with, uh, you know, Christian Law Association. Oh, okay. Well, well, you're not supposed to meet. And I said, well, we can meet. And I said, we have a, you know, a constitutionally protected right to be able to meet. So anyways, uh, every, uh, so then that Sunday, uh, I got a call on Monday uh, from that same gentleman. Every service, after every single service uh, for almost uh, uh, two and a half months, that gentleman called me, whether it was on uh, Thursday, he, he always called me on Thursday, but then uh, some weeks he'd call me either Monday or Tuesday. Finally, the last time he called me, he said, you know what, we're going to have you arrested. I had had one of the deacons when we were uh, talking over the phone, and he said, Pastor, would you be willing to go to jail over this? I said, absolutely. I said, yep, I'll go to jail over this. He said, okay. He said, well, we'll whatever decision you make, we'll, we'll stand behind you. I said, okay. So uh, the gentleman uh, uh, from the health department, he talked to me and he said, hey, uh, uh, he said, uh, you know, you're, you're the only church in seven surrounding counties that is meeting in person. I said, I'm sorry, there's not more. I said, I'm going to call some uh, pastors that I know. And I said, I'm going to encourage them to do what we're doing. I said, uh, that way we're not the only one. There was a, even a pastor uh, here in town. Uh, uh, we don't uh, uh, necessarily agree doctrinally, but, but I knew him, knew where he stood, and, and uh, he was willing to at least uh, have services. And I told him, I did call him up, and I said, hey, uh, have services this Sunday. I said, quit, quit doing this. And he's like, oh, well, we're, we're trying to, you know, it's, it's what uh, everybody sees and what everybody's looking at. And I said, I wouldn't worry about that. I said, we're going we're gonna to stand before God and give an account to God. Uh, but nonetheless, they, they did end up meeting. But this gentleman uh, from the health department, he said, you know what, uh, well, we're just going to have to uh, uh, turn this over to the legal department. We'll have you arrested. I said, okay. And I called the, I had to happen to have the uh, sheriff's uh, cell number. I called our sheriff and, and uh, Sheriff Kramer. I said, Sheriff, I said, uh, are you going to come and arrest me? He goes, nah, Pastor Hallett, we know who you are. We know what you're doing. He said, nah, you're fine. Don't worry about it. He said, we got your back. I'm like, well, what about the city of Oakland? He goes, ah, no, they got your back too. Don't worry about it. I'm like, oh, okay, so you're not going to arrest me? He said, no. But I realized this. I told Naomi, I, I said, I almost got to the point where I was really discouraged. I was like, okay, am I crazy? Am I, you know, am I the only one that's doing this kind of thing? So I started calling some pastor friends, and, and I said, hey, you know, what are you doing? They said, well, we hear, heard what you're doing, so we're doing that. I ended up calling uh, about uh, a little over a dozen uh, different pastors. There was a pastor from Missouri. He called me up uh, on that same day. He called me up and he said, I don't know why, but God told me to call you. And I said, oh, okay. I don't, he goes, you don't know me from Adam. Told me his name, told me the church, told me the city. And he said, uh, I just want you to know, he said, we heard what you're doing. And he said, uh, we're going to do the same exact thing. He said, uh, uh, we've, we've been actually doing the exact same thing. And uh, he said, I just wanted to call you and encourage you to keep doing it. And you talk about the Lord just using that and orchestrating that to encourage you to do what's right. But I'm telling you this, there will be persecutions. I, I believe in, in our lifetime, 
you know, uh, I, I couldn't figure out before I was like, before COVID hit, I couldn't figure out how in the world it would, you know, people that are smart, how would they be deceived? You know, uh, uh, I know uh, uh, Satan is a very deceptive person. You look at Adam and Eve, they were very smart. Uh, he deceived them, amen? And it's affected us all the way to this day. But, but uh, uh, certainly I was like, how in the world are they going to, you know, are they going to be deceived to believe you know, uh, the lie when the rapture happens and all that, uh, how are they going to be deceived? And then COVID happened. I was like, man, it makes perfect sense. It, it makes sense as far as uh, how, how people will be persecuted. You know, uh, how quickly when people were like, hey, you're not wearing a mask. You know, uh, I had that happen. I was, uh, uh, some of you remember I had a softball that hit me in the face and, and I was at Menards and, and uh, they had been very gracious to me. And, and uh, you know, uh, I was in there and, and we went in there when it wasn't busy and we bought a whole, we were getting a whole bunch of things to, uh, uh, we had a work day that week and, and uh, I was like, you know what, uh, we'll just purchase these things and, and then get out of here and, and uh, this lady walks over and, and she goes, uh, sir, uh, the manager wants to talk to you. And I said, well, I didn't ask uh, uh, to talk to him. I said, uh, she goes, oh, you need to wait right here. He's, he's wanting to talk to you. I'm like, oh, that's okay. I said, uh, well, we're almost done. We're, we're just getting some stuff here and, and then we'll be going. And uh, so uh, very quickly, she got on the radio. She kind of turned her back and walked away. And, and uh, uh, very quickly, this uh, manager come running over there. And he goes, sir, you've got to put your mask on or we're going to have to ask you to leave. And I said, well, sir, I said, can't you see? I, my eye was bloodshot and, shot, and my face was all droopy. I had not had the surgery yet. I said, the doctor said not to have anything touch my face, including a face mask. I said, so I can't put it on. I said, uh, uh, I'm, I'm you know, here, we're purchasing these things. I said, I'm going to purchase these things. He goes, no, sir, we're going to have to ask you to leave immediately then. I said, well, I'm going to tell you right now. I said, I've already spent the time to fill this cart. I had already a a cart full of stuff. I said, uh, I'm just going to purchase these things, and uh, then we'll leave. And we we didn't go back to uh, Menards for, uh, uh, that was, uh, I think that was in like uh, May, and we didn't go back to Menards until after December. I think it was like uh, maybe January or something like that when we finally went back to Menards that year. But all these things, I was telling you all these things because there are going to be persecutions of Christians. They're going to get to the point where they're going to say, hey, uh, you know, you, you can't preach the word of God. You're, uh, you're going to have to make a decision as a pastor. Hey, am I going to preach the word of God? Am I going to, uh, you know, face uh, uh, and be willing to go to jail? You know, uh, uh, I forget which uh, 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 person from the past uh, was willing to preach uh, from jail. Was it Paul, uh, uh, John Bunyan? Was that his name? Uh, preached from jail and, and wrote, uh, wrote some books because of it and all that. But, but he was willing to preach. And, and uh, you know, you and I have to determine in our heart and say, you know what? Uh, uh, persecutions will come. You know, and the, world, uh, the, the Bible tells us, in the world ye shall have tribulation. Amen. And you're going to have to determine, hey, am I going to uh, worry about uh, public opinion? Am I going to worry about what everybody else says? Or am I going to do what's right because it's right to do? That's what you're going to have to determine. You're going to have to determine, hey, am I going to continue to do what's right no matter what anybody else does? Turn with me real quick like at 1 Peter chapter number 4. 1 Peter chapter number 4. And in 1 Peter chapter number 4, I want you to notice with me there in verse number uh, uh, 12. 1 Peter chapter number 4. And verse number 12. He said, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. You know, when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were trying to do what was right, they were persecuted. Think about this, when uh, Joseph was trying to do what was right, he was persecuted. Uh, The illustration of Jesus, he was trying to do what was right, amen? And yet he was crucified. Why? Because uh, everybody wanted to follow around with the crowd, nobody wanted to stand up. You know, I I often thought about uh, even John, you know, I I don't know where John was at. John was his beloved, and uh, John and and Jesus were close, and and who knows where he was at, whether he was just kind of standing around the crowd watching what was happening, whatever it was. There are going to be times that you're going to have to be willing to say, hey, uh, as a Christian, being a Christian, by the way, does not exclude you from, uh, from persecution. You as a pastor, you know this as well. 
There are going to be times that people are going to accuse you and, and uh, accuse you of things. You know, I've, as I said, uh, some of the things I've been accused of, I was like, what in the world? Where are they coming up with this stuff? Amen. I shared a little bit. I'm not going to get, uh, because I'm, uh, this will be online and I don't want the individual I mentioned about last night uh, that, uh, that, for that to be hurt or anything like that. But that person uh, is starting to, uh, uh, their eyes are getting open. Uh, the, uh, the other individual I mentioned, not the first person I mentioned at the beginning of this uh, message, but the other individual I mentioned last night, uh, uh, their heart is getting right with the Lord. I, I've, I've seen it just in the last uh, couple of weeks. And even Brother Sama, he said, you know, Pastor, he said, you, you said don't give up uh, praying for this individual. And uh, he said, I've seen God working in this person's heart and life. That person, as I said, made false accusations. I was under investigation and all that for over two months. I was like scrutinized by everything I did with my children. I'm like, what in the world? But persecutions will come. Amen? When you're doing right, you're going to have a target on you. Satan does not... You know, by the way, listen, Pastor. He'll, if he doesn't... Uh, if, he doesn't uh, if Satan isn't able to discourage you, he'll try to use your children to discourage you. He'll try to use other Christians to discourage you. Listen carefully. He'll even use other pastors to discourage you. It was a time in my life, this would have been uh, 22, so about uh, two and a half years ago. Uh, it, was, uh, I, it was the most, discour- I, my wife, she said, Tim, I've never seen you this discouraged. She said, I've never seen this. She said, Tim, you've got to get out of this funk. I don't, I don't know what it's going to take. We went to a meeting. It was uh, uh, Brother uh, Caleb Hansen had a pastor's meeting. And uh, it was actually our anniversary, uh, the, the between the two days, the second day was our anniversary. And uh, I said, you know, babe, let's just go to this meeting. I, I said, uh, I, I don't know what else it's going to take, but let's go to this meeting. Went to the meeting, and, and uh, some of you have heard of Brother Mike Ray. Brother Mike Ray, he and I were talking, and, and uh, uh, he said, Brother Hallett, he said, I've got a book. I want you to read it. He encouraged me to get that book, and you know, I'll tell you about it after, after service if you're interested in it. But uh, that book was an encouragement. But uh, his message that he preached the night before was, keep your pole in the water. Boy, I tell you, what an encouraging message. Amen. Uh, I had heard him preach it before, but when I was going through what I was going through and hearing that message, I was like, okay, Lord, yep, I need to keep my pole in the water. Amen. Then uh, Brother Terry Angel was one of the other speakers. Brother Terry Angel got up and, and he preached about, you know, going soul winning. I'm like... Yep, there's the last souls, amen. And I realized for a couple of weeks there, I hadn't been going out soul winning because I was all in the dumps and looking at myself and, oh man, woe is me. And, and sometimes that happens in our life. And there is, a, uh, there is no example, by the way, and listen carefully, there is no example in the Bible of someone not experiencing persecution. You look at the Bible, you look at the scriptures, Every single person that is given an example of in the Bible, they experience some kind of persecution on some kind of level in their life. Joseph. Joseph was hated and sold into slavery by his own brothers. His own brothers. They're like, I can't believe this. You're thinking, what is wrong with these guys? This is his flesh, they're, that's his, they're flesh and blood. But you know, I've seen all kinds of stuff happen. Why? Persecutions will come. So persecutions, number one, will come. Number two, wickedness will become worse. Wickedness will become worse. Look back in our text there, verse number 13. But evil men and seducers shall get better and better and uh, tell the truth and be more truthful. That's not what my Bible says. It says, but evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. The Apostle Paul was not going to sugarcoat uh, what people, particularly evil people, would be like and continue to be like to Timothy. He was being real with Timothy. He's telling Timothy, hey, this is what is going to happen. Amen. Wickedness will become worse. 
you know, just when you think, well, nothing worse could, could you know, nothing could get any worse, turn with me to uh, Luke chapter number 17. Luke chapter number 17. And look with me, if you will, at verse number 26. Luke chapter number 17, verse 26, as it was in the days of Noe or Noah, so shall it, also, uh, shall, uh, shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. I've often thought about, I don't know if you do this, I, I often you know, think about and dwell upon you know, what certain things were like during certain times. And, and uh, you know, I've often thought about like Noah, you know, uh, the fact that God wanted to destroy the entire earth because of the wickedness of man. And there was only eight people, eight Eight people that were righteous enough to get on the, on the ark. In the entire world. That's a lot of people. Amen? That's uh, 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 the fact that there was only eight people out of the entire world that were willing to say, hey, I'm going to follow God. And uh, uh, the fact that Noah, for 120 years, was willing to preach and, and uh, tell him, hey, by the way, there's going to be rain coming. And people are like, oh, yeah, we heard that before. Wickedness will wax worse and worse. You're going to have to get to the point where you're willing to preach the word, and they're going to have people, even in your church. I've had folks that uh, came up to me after the service and said, Pastor, you're dead wrong, and then walked out of the, out of the service. I was like, what in the world? Right later, I realized the Holy Spirit was working on their heart. That's what was going on. But sin will become rampant. Look with me if you at Romans chapter number 5. Romans chapter number 5. And notice with me there, verse number 20. Romans chapter number 5, verse number 20 says, Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound, but where sin abounded, so we know sin abounds, grace did much more abound. But we also know that sin will abound more, amen? And, and then when the grace will abound more as well. And you, know, you and I need to realize, hey, sin will become rampant. Things will not become better and better. People are not going to get better and better. Ill, you know, uh, uh, I, as I said, I have just been dumbfounded at some of the things that people do. Amen? As I said, the one, one individual left about 10 years ago, uh, I was talking with another pastor friend, and, and uh, I thought about all the problems that we've had in our church uh, in the last about t- 12 years. And I can honestly say, without, without any reservation, 98% of the problems, and I'm not exaggerating this, 98% of the problems that we've had can be pointed back to that one person. The 98% of the problems we've had in the last 12 years. I, I was like, Lord... Why, why are you allowing this? I, I don't understand this. But you know, people are going to wax worse and worse. Amen? And, and there's no, uh, you know, God wasn't surprised and said, oh, whoa, whoa, what happened there? Amen? But we know that evil people will become worse and worse. And this individual, uh, I had told some people, I said, you mark my word. One day they'll change versions of the Bible. They'll, uh, 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 they'll change their dress standard. Uh, they'll change their music standard. And I said, uh, they may even go as far as changing religions. And I said, if they go even further, I said, you mark my word, they'll deny God. They were like, oh, no. I had, had a, a, a relative of that person said, laughed at me and said, ah, Pastor, that'll never happen. I'm like, you mark my word, it'll happen. After I had said that, fast forward, uh, this was just uh, uh, about two years ago. Uh, two years ago, we were on our way to a, a meeting, and, and one of the ladies said, Pastor Hallett. So what? She goes, you're right. You know, you know brother, brother Mark, I hate being right. I really do. I, it's like, I wish just people would prove me wrong. Just do right, and then you'll prove me wrong. Amen? He said, uh, you were right. I said, what about? He said, remember so-and-so? And I'm like, yeah. He said, they posted on Facebook today, I no longer believe in your little G God. I deny his existence. I don't believe in heaven. I don't believe in hell. And I was like, oh, my word. And they said, you said that that would happen. I said, yeah. I said, I was hoping I would be wrong. I said, it really was. I, I, I was 
I was thinking that, you know, maybe God to get a hold of their heart and they, they do right and start uh, serving the Lord and, and get right with God. But, but uh, you know, the fact is that there are, there are uh, evil people out there that will do evil no matter what you do or don't do. And that individual, uh, uh, they sat there uh, with another individual that reported me uh, to CPS, and they sat at a, a lunch. And I know this because the husband of one of the individuals came to me and said, Pastor Hallett, this is what happened. They were sitting at lunch, and they were laughing about it, and they said, well, we'll get them in jail. We'll get them to stop being a pastor. You don't think people will do evil? I've watched it. I've seen it. Why? Because the Scripture is right. The Bible is always right. And the Bible says that men will wax worse. Evil men will wax worse and worse. And just when you think, okay, this is the worst I've ever seen. Guess what? It's going to get worse. Amen? And for lack of better English, it's going to get worser and worser. Amen? But that's because wickedness will become worse. That's what the Bible tells us. So we see their uh, persecutions will come. And we see wickedness will become worse. But lastly, number three, but you need to continue in the things of God. But you need to continue in the things of God. Look back in our text there in 2 Timothy chapter number 3 and verse number 14. He said, but continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. Persecutions will come. Afflictions will come. Wickedness will become worse. But it's no excuse just to stop everything. Paul is telling Timothy, hey, continue. Keep doing what I've taught you to do. Keep preaching the word, amen. Remember when he tells uh, Tim uh, Timothy, he says, hey, preach the word. He tells him in the very next uh, chapter, he says, preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. You know, whether it's popular or not, amen. Preach the word. Whether uh, people like you or not, preach the word, Amen. You have to determine to continue in the things of God. No matter how uh, uh, nasty someone is to you, you still, uh, you still need to uh, respond in a Christ-like manner. They still need the gospel of Christ. When we were going through some things uh, about two, three years ago, I, uh, most of you, well, all, I think all of you in this room here know Brother Randy King. I called him up and said, asked his advice. I said, hey, you know what, what do I do? I said, I've never dealt with this, and and uh, he said this, he said, Brother Tim, he said, every single person, he said, your wife, your children, your church people, everybody that you deal with, he said, they need to see Christ in you. And I was like, man alive, I said, uh, that's, a, that's a tall order. He said, yeah, but he said, uh, I'll guarantee you, if you, he said, if you seek the scriptures, you seek Christ, he said, uh, they'll see Christ in you. In the last uh, about three years here, I've had uh, about a dozen people in our church come to me, and I had one person even outside of our church, uh, a person that, uh, uh, to my knowledge, is an unsaved individual. Uh, they came to me, and they said this, Pastor, we see Christ in you. Man, the first, uh, first person that told me that, man, uh, brother, brother Weiss, I just sat down and cried. I was like, what? I don't, I don't feel that. Amen. Uh, Brother Myro, uh, when, when I had a, uh, another individual come, when, that, when the unsaved un individual came to me and said that, I, I was like, Lord, I, I feel unworthy. I, I don't even feel like I'm, I'm uh, you know, I, I, don't, I, I don't think I'm a good orator. I don't think I'm a good preacher. I, I said I'm, I've probably failed as, uh, as a uh, pastor more uh, than, uh, uh, than mo you know, all of us would probably be willing to admit it in this room. Amen. But I said, Lord, would you help me to just to, uh, make sure that people see Christ and make sure that uh, uh, they're not seeing me going through these problems. They see you, amen? They need to be treated. Others need to be treated in a Christ-like manner. They need to see Christ in you. Look with me if you will at 1 Thessalonians chapter number 2. 1 Thessalonians chapter number 2. Again, I'm not saying anything new today. Nothing, nothing I'm coming up with here. 
just some things that hopefully will be a help to you. First Thessalonians chapter number two, beginning in verse number four, he says this, but as we were allowed of God to be put in trust with the gospel, even so we speak, not as, as pleasing men, but God, which trieth our hearts. For neither at any time used we flattering words, as ye know, nor a cloak of covetousness, God is witness, nor of men sought we glory, neither of you, nor yet of others, when we might have been burdensome as the apostles of Christ, but we were gentle among you, even as a nurse cherisheth her children. So being affectionately desirous of you, we were willing to have imparted unto you, not the gospel of God only, but also your own souls, because ye were dear unto us, for ye remember, brethren, our labor and travail for laboring night and day, because we would not uh, be chargeable unto any of you. We preached unto you the gospel of, of God. Your witnesses in God also, how holily and justly and unblameably we behaved ourselves among you that believe. As ye know how we exhorted and comforted and charged every one of you as a father doth his children, that ye would walk worthy of God who hath called you unto his kingdom and glory. If you notice uh, verse number 7 and verse number 10, he said that, that but we were gentle among you even as a nurse cherisheth her children. Ye are witnesses, uh, uh, and, and God also, how holily and justly and unblameably we behaved ourselves among you that believe. I'll be honest. Brother Dahl, there's been times I wanted to get in the flesh. Boy, I wanted to, I wanted to just, you know, let somebody have it with my words and say, all right, <laughs> you asked for it, I'll give it to you. And I was like, no, the scripture says I need to treat them as a nurse with their own child. And, child. and I need to be unblameable. And I need to be uh, justly you know, showing forth Christ. Sometimes we want to get in the flesh, don't we? Amen. But that's the time we need to say, no, God has shown me how I need to walk. I need to walk worthy of God. I need to make sure that I, I'm uh, showing forth Christ in all that I say and do. I need to continue to do what God has already shown me to do. Amen. It's not going to be easy because there are times you just want to wanna blast them with, uh, in the face with both sh barrels of the shotgun. Amen. And just say, boy, I felt good. Amen. But then you realize, wait a second, if I do that, that's going to hurt them spiritually. And what if, what if, you know, they could be uh, a great influence and influence a lot of people, spiritually speaking. Amen. Continue being faithful, ministering to others, even when the going gets tough. Continue to read your Bible when it, it's hard. Continue to encourage others, even when you're discouraged. Boy, I tell you, I, uh, when I was going through what I was going through, I had some pastors that were calling me, said, Brother Howard, I, I just need to call in. I need to be encouraged today. And I'm like, okay. And uh, I'm like, in my heart, I just wanted to, you know, sit there and cry. And I'm like, hey, can I tell you my problems? I just, I just want to, you know, suck my thumb here and just tell you all my problems. Can I do that? And, uh, but I was like, okay, let me be an encouragement to you. So uh, I, there were some guys that were going through some things and, and now going through what we went through uh, about three years ago, I've had about five pastors that are going through, I mean, if uh, one of them is almost the identical situation. I mean, just identical. I'm like, holy cow. And he said, well, how, he said, have you been able to even shake their hand? I said, yeah. He goes, how do you do it? I'm like the Lord's grace. I said, I want to throat punch him in the flesh. Amen. I said, but it, it ain't going to accomplish anything. I said, I want to say, you know, some things in the flesh, but it still won't accomplish anything. I said, I want, even though they didn't treat me Christ-like, I said, I want them to uh, see that I'm going to treat them in a Christ-like manner. And he said, Brother Hallett, he said, I, I, I don't know that I can do that. I said, well, I said, by the Lord's grace, I said, brother, honestly, I, it, it's not me. And you and I have to get to the point where we're willing to say, you know what, I'm going to continue to treat them 
in a Christ-like manner. Continue to be Christ-like when nobody else around you is Christ-like. Continue to witness to others, even if someone rejects the gospel. You know, I, I think every person probably in this room has had a gospel track thrown in their face, amen? I, I had a gentleman not too long ago, uh, you know, it's, it's great when you get somebody, you, you know, they're just hungry for the gospel. Isn't that awesome? Man, you get to lead them to the Lord, and they're like, you know, just pliable. They're just ready. Amen? But I've also had some people that were like, nope. Had a, a young lady, she was in my youth group years ago, and, and uh, she uh, called me up, said, Pastor, uh, Pastor Hallett, would you go up and see my dad? My dad's in the hospital, uh, and uh, would you go up and talk to my dad about the gospel? I said, yeah. Went up there, and, and uh, uh, his name was Greg. And I said, Greg, I, I said, uh, I'm here uh, to have a word of prayer with you. And, and he said, okay. And I said, uh, by the way, can I, can I share something with you? And he goes, well, I suppose. And I started sharing with him the gospel. This is a guy that was a devout Catholic, grew up in the Catholic church, uh, staunch Catholic uh, that I remember. I think he maybe came to one or two services in the, all the years that he was here or in town or whatever. Uh, and uh, I started sharing with him the gospel. This guy is on his deathbed. This guy has an ashen gray face, uh, ashen, ashen gray uh, look to him. Uh, he barely, when I, when, I, when I was talking to him, he barely, yeah, sure, that'd be fine. He could barely talk. Brother Copes, I think it was demonic what happened next. I started sharing with him the gospel, and he sat up in, his, in, his, uh, in the hospital bed. He looked at me, and he said, I don't want anything to do with your God. And he laid back down. Thanks for coming by, Pastor. I was like, okay. I said, well, Greg, I'm just going to pray with you, and I'm going to leave. He said, okay, thanks. Thanks for coming by. And uh, I just had a word of prayer with him. I, I prayed the gospel. I said, Lord, if Greg doesn't know Jesus Christ as Savior before he breathes his last breath here on earth, help him to put his faith and, treat and trust in Jesus Christ and him alone, nobody else, nothing else. To this day, I don't believe he, uh, I, I don't believe he got saved, to my knowledge. The daughter, uh, he called his daughter and said, you put Pastor Hallett up to this, didn't you? She said, Dad, I love you. I care about you. And, and she called me crying, and she said, uh, Pastor Hal, he, he, uh, he didn't want to get saved. But you know, you still have to witness to him. Continue in the things of God. You see, the easy road is what most people take when, the, when things go wrong. Some pastors, they'll quit when things get tough. I know some pastors that as soon as there's problems that, were, uh, that have arisen in the church, they, they skip town, go to the next church. It would have been easy, you know, 10 years ago to just say, all right, we're, we'll leave. There's, there's uh, too many problems here and we'll leave. If we would have left, we wouldn't have seen the souls that got saved as a result of that. It would have been easy, you know, three years ago to leave and leave town. I had actually some people, they said, Pastor, if you'd have left town, we thought you would have been guilty of every single thing they were accusing you of. They said, we know you're not guilty of those things because you stayed. If we had left three years ago, we wouldn't have seen the souls that we've seen saved uh, just recently. In the last three years, we've, we've seen uh, over 100 souls saved in the last three years. Why? We have a good God. But you have to continue in the things of God. You can't just say, well, that's it. I'm giving up. I'm, I'm going to throw in the towel. I, I'm just going to stop. I'm, I'm going to go to a different ministry. By the way, I've learned this. You know, uh, you go to a different ministry, you know what happens? They, it's the same people the same attitude, the same spirit. They're just a different name, different face. Amen? They're all there. Amen? You just, I, I've been to some of your churches. I've been, there have been times my wife and I were like, oh, hey, doesn't that remind you of so-and-so? We're like, yeah, that does, yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, doesn't this person, you know, how they, how they talk to people, doesn't that remind you of brother so-and-so or sister so-and-so? Oh, yep, yep. Amen, why? They're, they're just different, you know, different names, different faces, but same people, Amen? The Bible even tells us there's nothing new under the sun. There will always be problems. Problems will always arise. But there will be some people that will quit when those problems arise. Some will, like I said, want to go to a different ministry, and they think the problems will go away. But, but uh, uh, you know, you and I need to be willing to say, uh, Lord, help me to continue. 
I want to encourage you to continue. Continue to share the gospel. Continue to reach others. Continue in the things of God. Continue when persecutions come. Continue when wickedness becomes worse and worser and worser and worser. Continue in the things of God that you've known and been assured of, knowing of whom you've learned them. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Every head bowed, every eye closed, nobody looking around. I'm going to have Mrs. Halleck come and I'm going to have her play a hymn of invitation again. You know, I don't want you to answer this out loud, but maybe perhaps you had thoughts of quitting. When the problems arose that we had, I, I didn't think of quitting, but boy, it was discouraging. Boy, I just, I, I was like, what in the world? I was really discouraged, and I, I, I have to be honest, I, I didn't read my Bible like I should have. I didn't witness like I should have. But I want to encourage you, maybe you've, you've gone through some things recently or in the past that you, you're like, boy, yep, I just need to continue. I need to continue to go forward. I need to continue to rise back up. I need to continue in the things of God. In just a moment, I want to encourage you, maybe come, or if you, you say, well, I've been continuing, I've been doing right, I've never, I've never stopped, and maybe you can just pray, Lord, help me to continue to do those things and keep doing right and uh, not quit. Because somebody else, by the way, listen, pastor, somebody else is watching you. Perhaps another pastor, perhaps another uh, a church member or two or more, they're watching you whether you're going to quit or not. We're going to see how you're going to react and how you're going to respond to some of the things that you go through. I want to encourage you to continue. Heavenly Father, thank you for speaking to hearts here. Lord, I pray that you'll bless this invitation time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Everyone stand to their feet, every head bowed, every eye closed.